The outcome of the election will have wide-ranging impacts, and progress is undoubtedly needed in Haiti. The country's literacy rate is below 50 percent. More than half of the country is living below the poverty line. Income inequality is also an issue in Haiti. It ranks sixth worst in the world in terms of the gap between the rich and the poor. Four in ten Haitians are unemployed. That number is much higher when factoring in Haitians who are underemployed. CCTV Stephen Gibbs has insight from Haiti. Well, Mike, a bit of a milestone has been passed here because there was plenty of doubt both within Haiti and outside it whether a significant election like this one could take place without major problems. But that is precisely what happened. Monday morning in Port-au-Prince, as the clear-up began in this polling station, a cause for quiet celebration. This is a country where politics and violence have long been entwined, yet Sunday's vote went without serious incident. That's not to say it was a flawless or comfortable process. And it was certainly confusing, with 54 candidates for president on the ballot paper. So who might finally take over from the sitting president, Michel Martelly, in what would be only the second peaceful transfer of power in Haiti's history? One apparent front-runner is Jude Celestin, here being greeted by the US-based rapper Wycliffe Jean. Celestin is politically to the left of Martelly. Another possible successor is entrepreneur banana farmer Jovenel Moise. Like other presidential candidates in the Americas, he says his main selling point is that he's not a politician. What do you bring to Haiti's politics as a businessman rather than as a professional politician? But I'm an entrepreneur. It's, it's really important to know in Haiti all the people do politics because they talk, they talk, they talk. And it's time to change the country from the blah, blah, blah to action. Most of the leading candidates agree that Haiti needs to become less dependent on international aid, which incidentally almost entirely funded this election, and start building an economy. One sector that the current government has been pushing is tourism. Amongst Haiti's many attractions is its spectacular and as yet unspoilt Caribbean coast. Yet a major challenge is the country's chronic infrastructure. Progress on improving that has been painfully slow. And there is a bit of hope in the air here, because if this election, a successful election, represents some sort of political stability, then the ambition is other progress may follow.